us through nature, through the events of the world, that you are coming very, very soon. Help us not to be blind to this truth, especially at this time. Thank you so much for everything you have done and are doing for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. We're not going to beat about the bush because we've got no time. Whether now or in the general picture, we don't have time. And um, you realize that uh, for submission, we, we usually turn to the usual verses. You know the usual verses, women, right? Oh, we know them. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, 22, Colossians chapter 3, 18. And you know, one thing that baffles me is the fact that the wording for these two verses is exactly the same. Have you thought about that? The wording for these particular verses is exactly the same. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and to the church at Colossae and says to them the exact thing regarding women. Ladies, are you with me? It's our night tonight, so I need more amens from you than from the men. Are you with me? Yeah. I, I, that's good. That's a good one. And I need you to understand that because of these verses, we don't need to beat about the bush. It is what it is. It is what it is. And so we turn to Romans chapter 6 verse 22. It then says to us, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end, the end everlasting life. I need you to understand this. Christianity should never be about feelings. Women are very susceptible. We women are very susceptible to feelings. Christianity is not about how you feel the gospel should be. It's about God and what he says. It's about principle. So God says here, there, there's a freedom that we need in life. And there's a servitude that we need in life. Those two things. There are two things. There is a freedom that we need. And there's a servitude that we need in life. Freedom from sin. Because sin, for all its hard work, the payment, the salary. How many of you get paid? Raise your hand if you get paid. The salary for sin is death. Oh, you work so well. We like to promote you. You're going to die earlier. That's the salary for sin. So we need freedom from sin, but servitude to God because Romans 6 Romans 6 then says for the gift of God to us in his in servitude to in service to him is everlasting life I want to ask you a question do you think that that gift is equal or is 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 realistically um correct if I should say to the benefic the benef beneficiary are you with me does it match the, the benefit and the beneficiary? To being a good Christian, you get everlasting life. No, it doesn't. God is being very giving here. And he says to us, for the benefit of serving him, we get everlasting life. I need you to understand that our servitude to the master emphasizes itself in the aftermath of a sin and its introduction, its presence, and its critical players are seen in the book of Genesis. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 3. We have three players. We have the devil who uses the snake. We have the woman. And we have a man. I need you to understand that even where you go to the doctor, the doctor sometimes can prescribe. If you have the usual flu, the doctor won't dig into your history. Confirm. The doctor will just give you, okay, just take this and then you'll be fine. Am I in the right place, doc? But when it is something that is serious, things like sugar diabetes, I'm led to believe, the doctor has to go deeper even into your family history to come out with the issue. Uh, the, uh, just some few days ago, I had a problem. I was getting dizzy. I was feeling a lot of confusion. And I, I was really disoriented. And, you know, I, I happened to speak to my sister and she was away. And she's, she's in the States. And we're on the phone and I say to her, look, I'm experiencing this and this. And she says, listen, that's nothing new. What you're going through is something that runs in our family. 
uh, your aunt and your, um, your mother and your, uh, we have this problem in our family. So what you need to do, then she gave me the way to work around that problem. So now I need you to understand that even with some spiritual problems with ha- we have in our lives, we need to dig deeper into history to find out where the problem lies and so understand the medication we, we need to use today. Are you with me, church? So for that, the answer then needs to lie in Genesis chapter 3. Let's go to chapter 3 and verse 1. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made, had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. I need you to understand that verse 1 introduces us to a certain beautiful aspect of women. Women are good receptors. Are you with me, church? We are good at receiving. Whether it be information, whether it be a seed, whether it be gifts, we are good at receiving and multiplying that which we have received. And so we are introduced to a woman who receives information, but unfortunately from the wrong source. And because of that, fast forward into today's generation, we, the little Eves of today, are suffering with the problem of gossiping because we need to hear from someone. Are you with me, church? Oh, that's where we're good at. We, we are good at listening to the wrong information, just like our ancestor. Let's move together. So the woman is her inherent ability is being abused already by the devil. He makes her listen to something that puts God into doubt. All right. And I want us to turn to verse six. Uh, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to the to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. I want to dissect that. The woman's perspective changes because the devil taps into what she needed to hear. In fact, in other words, he seals the deal. Now, the pastor said yesterday, that Zimbabwe is currently undergoing elections. Are you with me? One thing that I've noticed from the elections is that the candidates, the presidential candidates, one particular thing stands out from them. They are sweet talkers. Are you with me? Oh, they're promising us things. Spaghetti roads, uh, bullet trains that, you, that will get you from destination A to destination B in 30 seconds. Oh. And you know, if, you know that moment you shock the people who make the bullet trains and they start believing even you. That's how good these candidates are. They are so good at marketing themselves that you start believing them like, wow. Oh, yeah. And you ex them because they have managed to appeal. Now it is that very appeal. It is that very enticing language that the devil uses in these circumstances. And they appeal to a woman. I need you to understand that um, Ellen White even says that had she been addressed by a being like the angels, her fears would have been excited. But what could, what could this small, little fascinating, harmless but beautiful creature do to her? The devil had to appear in a way that's not so scary so that Eve would feel there's no harm in this. And so he appeals to her beauty. Ellen White says he spoke about her beauty. And and you know, we love being told you're beautiful. You know, you're out there doing your thing. And someone says, oh girl, you look good. You're like, are you serious? I hadn't even noticed. Yes, you did. So the devil taps into that person. He taps into that taste that I need to hear day by day as a woman. That my husband is failing to give me. That my boss is saying each and every day as I step into the office. He tapped into that. 
And he says to the woman, I, I need you to, int- to listen to me. And how the devil puts it. He doesn't end on the beauty. He, s- he moves his focus. Whilst, while he has his int- her interest caught on her beauty, he shifts into his main target. He says, but you do know that if you eat this stuff, you'll become like God's. If I, 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 I ate it too and I started talking. <gasps> I, I was wondering, Snake, because you did. You're talking very well. Yes, now look, I ate this thing. It works. He says to her, you will become like God's. As soon as he says that, church, I need you to understand that the woman ate the fruit alone. Did you notice? Let's read that together. Listen. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree and the tree to de- to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did what that should make you fear why did she not take the fruit go to her husband and then make and then we eat together no no she wanted to be powerful first church we have a problem no no listen you're not getting it She wanted the power first. She wanted to rule someone who she felt. Look, I I feel like uh, Adam's problem is like when he he walks, he doesn't make people feel scared. You know, walk with authority. Don't go like, hello, trees. Walk like a man. If I were Adam, I would come and say, listen to me now. And so she took off the fruit first because she thought that, look, I need this power first. Are you seeing the danger in our women, our femininity? That aspect of wanting to take the cup, we have it in us, women. Oh, nowadays, the world is singing human rights. Uh, you, we know that song, right? The world is singing Miss Independent. The world is singing Who Runs the World? And it says what? Girls. I know it sounds funny, but this is serious. The devil taps into what makes you feel a bit more special than others. Ask yourself, why in society are women looking for liposuctions? For huge behinds, small waists, large lips. What is it going to change? It's because they want to feel special. Are you with me, church? Ellen White says, When Eve took off the fruit, she thought that she was going to be transformed into something exhilarating, something exciting. She was going to be, to to change into a, into a higher level of being. I need you to understand women that even today, the devil is marketing Using the same strategy. You stand in town today. A woman can look at a man. And tell him you shut up. Oh we can do that. In in these places we call home. There are wars being fought right there. There is a man who, who is being undressed in front of the children. There is a man who is being told. You know you. You, you know you owe me. There's a man who is being told you are nothing. Even in the workplace, things have been called formal so much that a woman can look up to a man, look down on a man and say, I will fire you tomorrow. Same marketing strategy. There's a Shona Proverbs proverb that says, uh, I'll say it in Shona first, then explain it in, in English. Is that okay? It says, You cannot have two bulls in the same crawl. Never. What is that saying? It is saying that one is not a bull. The other needs to submit. <sighs> one preacher says, We ought to train up a child and help the man. But today, we want to train the husbands and help the children. You didn't hear me. I said, a particular preacher said, the Bible says, 
parents train up a child. Confirm? And the same Bible says, we women are an help me to our husband. Amen? Nowadays, we want to train the husband and help the children. Now, we, the husband comes home. Who do you think is going to pick up those shoes? Take them to the bedroom. Why do you brush your teeth like it's a campaign? C- clean up after yourself. Training the husband. And the child, when the child makes a, leaves a mess, so, oh, that's how they are. You know, these kids, they need. Are you seeing us, ladies? I need those amens coming strong. How we started is how we finish. Amen? Oh, come on. They're weak now, pastor. We are changing what God has set down for us. And let me tell you, back at home, a new doctrine has evolved. And I say this with a clear conscience because I know who I am. Uh, And that doctrine, I need to tell you, came with women. This doctrine is about prayer warriors. Do you have them here? Ah, there we go. So now I can talk to you because I'm sure it came with the woman. Mm. The Bible at no point speaks of prayer as a battlefield. Are you with me, church? God's, in fact, Ellen White says, at the cross, the ground is level. In fact, Ephesians talks of prayer as that which complements the weaponry that we need to use in fighting against the devil. But in no way is it part of the weaponry. Do you remember that? If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in no point does it speak of prayer as a gift. It speaks of everything else as a gift, but not prayer. And then because you watched a movie, yeah, you watched a movie and it told you that you can be a prayer warrior. You came with it to church. We are prayer warriors. In rugby, they have a concept. At one time, there is need to tackle a player as a whole to put them down. Are you with me? But in some instances, There just needs to be a slight nudge and the big guy just comes tumbling down. Do you know that? That is the same way the devil diverts us. He doesn't need to divert us, I mean a lot, just slightly, slightly for us to lose focus, slightly because the gap widens as you move with time. Are you with me church? And so These things are coming from a woman who means, well, listen, let me ask you a question. Okay, let's dismiss. Let's just say Eve ate of the fruit because she wanted to check if it wasn't poisonous. Okay, I have my life. Let's go and give my husband. And she meant well. Let's just say that's what happened. I want to ask you the same. How many times, ladies, have we approached these men and given them something that we thought was intentionally right, but is in all respects wrong? No amens, pastor. I understand because now we're talking the reality. How many times have we picked up things from out there and brought them to the church? I need you to understand. When you are diagnosed with sugar diabetes, the way you used to live before has to change. Do we agree? And you have to conform to a new lifestyle altogether. The same with God's word. The way you used to live cannot be the way you have, you live now after receiving the truth. And herein lies our cure. Let's go to Genesis chapter three, verse 16. Verse 16 says, Unto the woman, he said. Who said this? Who's this unto the woman, he said? Who's this he? Who is it? You said it, not me. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. I have never heard. This is just as we go. I have never heard of a woman who comes from the labor, labor ward singing. So like, wow, girl, I had fun. That was fun. You, you should have seen me push. I pushed. It was fun. I've never seen that. And the same verse says, um, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. There are many of us who have had many miscarriages here and it's because of that verse. Let's go on. 
In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Re-emphasis to mean that it is staying. And till today, we can confirm that. And listen to this last part. Listen to our cure, ladies. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. Now in law, there is what they call a peremptory word. A peremptory word is not a word of conflict or decision or feelings. It's a must, a have to. That shall there is emphasized twice. First, when it says your desire shall be for your husband. It is not bad to desire that man next to you. Shepherdess, are you with me? Yeah. Your desire shall be for your husband. And listen to the next shall. And he shall rule over thee. Can you say amen to that? Yo! Yeah. Very well said amen with love. Like, amen! Let us accept the rulership of our husbands as an anecdote to the sin problem. Remember, this verse came after sin came into society. Are you with me? It came to our great grandmother and it came to her as a solution to the problem she had just experienced. And so if she had to go under this, and remember we agreed, it was not the devil who said this. It was not her husband who said this. It was God. I have a problem with, me, with, with the people back home. Because when I get to that verse and I say that, they frown. Like, what do you mean? But why? But why? It's not me who said this. I'm not campaigning for a new movement, elder. This is what the Bible says. And it's saying this to a sin-sick generation. He shall rule over you. I need you to understand that ignoring or going against this verse is going against God. For your sake and mine, we have to do it. You know what we're capable of. Women, you know. We, you, you know that time you look at yourself in the middle. Oh, you are capable of stuff. You should have. You know, I have those moments. I, I go by the mirror and I say, ah, I don't trust you. We are capable of this. And so we need someone to lead. We need a Joshua who says, as for me and my family, because if Mary, if Miriam comes, she says, I also have the Holy Ghost. I've also worked. I've also prophesied. There's nothing special about this Moses. If we were leading, things would be very emotional. I don't like that girl. The way she looks at me, take her out of the camp. Listen, unfortunately, we need to understand, Sister White says, because of sin and its miseries, Ellen White says, Man, man's abuse of the supremacy thus given him has too often rendered the lot of women very bitter and made their life a burden. Some have been sexually abused. I need to admit to this. I can't just act like it's not a reality in our submission. Some women hate men or are very domineering towards men because they were sexually abused as children. She's fighting the man. She's one. You know, you, we sit sometimes with couples. You see this woman, she's shaking. She's angry. And you're wondering what's happening. And when you dig into the past, you, re you realize that her uncle raped her and there was nothing she, can, she could do. And because of that, she's looking for power because she wants to fight that feeling. There's some men here who think that their wives are punching bags. Oh... And because of that, she wakes up and says, why do I have to submit to this monster? These are the abuses that make what God has put so well seem so bad. And look, I understand because I am a woman. I see it every day. But it is under our ancestors' leadership that sin made its way into the world. And because of that, we cannot compromise. You see, through these experiences, the devil is looking for a way to make us disobey. Through the sexual abuse and all the justification that we have, the devil is looking for a way for us to say, submission cannot be right. For us to turn and look at the world and say, maybe there's something in the world that is better than in the church. Because the church, the, hum, the human rights are very good, confirmed. 
but it has come as a mockery of God's goodness. I need you to understand. Even in Revelation, have you not found it ironic that the beast is portrayed to be having, being seated, like having a woman seated upon it? We need to understand the time we're in. We're no more looking at the end of time, but we're living in the time of the end. There's a big difference. Listen, I am in no way saying that through submission they should be suffering. But we need to be conscious. It is not a sin to be ambitious, but be careful. It is not a sin to be outgoing, to be vibrant, to be assertive, but be careful. It is not a sin to be a cleric. It is not a sin to be a sanguine, a phlegmatic, a melancholy, but be careful. The songwriter writes in simple words to a free and lovely listener. It says, he says, my soul be on thy God. 10,000 foes arise, the hosts of sin oppressing hard to draw thee from the skies. Oh, watch and fight and pray. The battle never give up. Renew it boldly every day and help divine implore. Never think the victory won, nor lay thine armor down. Thy order's task will not be done till thou obtain the crown. Ladies, let us obtain the crown. As you walk as a single mother, obtain the crown. The battle is not over. If you're successful today, it doesn't mean you have won tomorrow. Obtain. Push. When you see that little Eve coming. And let me ask you something. Haven't you thought it funny that when Adam sees the woman, he says she shall be called woman. But after she sins, he says she shall be called Eve. Meaning, meaning mother of all. What name are you called by? Are you still a woman? Or are you now Eve? May God speak to us. We know what we need to do. Someone will ask you, okay, what, what, what about, what exactly, how do I submit? We know how we need to put the standard lower. And yet we know how to prayerfully do it in the Lord. You're in the Lord. You're not going to submit to a man who says, here, drink this alcohol. Just then, my Lord, no. No, let it not be. But remember, my soul be on thy God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that is true. And that is good for us. Like medicine after being diagnosed with a severe disease of sin. Lord, we ask that you may keep us in this word. Help us not to look to our feelings our emotions, but help us to turn to your word for your complete truth and live out that truth. Father, we ask that as women, you may help us in this time of the end to put your emblem up high. That, Lord, we may stand up and lead your children, the children that are born from our wombs, as we are led by their fathers. And even though we might not even be married, Father, I ask that you may be with each and every young lady or single woman out there lord speak to us help us to flourish in a world that is telling us to lead in the wrong way our servitude is our salvation and we ask that lord you may help us therein to realize that there is power in that servitude in jesus name i pray amen